it's okay, bro. You look like Yakuza. Don't worry about it. Uh, congratulations, guys. Oh, what do you mean? This is Borjgali. What are you talking about? Yeah. I see that. I see that. Yes, but for real. Give lots out. You know, talking about talking about Guram's fight, man, I mean, he was going against, as far as I know, undefeated, right? The, the guy, the guy yeah. was undefeated. Yeah. I mean, the guy Stop was wrong. very strong. I mean, he, I mean, that was a very tough battle, and Guram made a, an amazing performance. Did you see his kicks? Did you see Guram's kicks? Yeah, like, man. Every sick. single kick that he threw was like fire. Did you see? Like, did you see the other guy's face? <laughs> right, like before before he even landed each 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 of those kicks, the guy was making that face like, ah, oh, he's about to kick me again. Oh, I see what you're saying. I he, see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah, he was clinching. He was clinching. He when when the kick was coming, yeah. the other guy he was trying to get ready for. You saw his body go. You know, kind yeah. of like so much power. And and that guy, and he's I, an amazing submission grappler. He's he's very yeah. Very I didn't. Good. I thought he was a striker for some reason. I I didn't Both. do my homework. I think he's well rounded. He's, like he's like a, a GSP well man. He's like yeah. a Polish GSP dog. That guy, he's very well rounded. And so this was like a very hard fight for Guram. Yeah. His first fight going against a guy like that. Wow! And look what he did. That he was guy. really able to, you know, have that slight edge and advantage. I think the judges gave it to him because. His overall aggressiveness. He, you, know? you know what the the what Guram's fight. Uh, you know what it reminded me yesterday. Have you seen Boss Rutten versus Kevin Rendelman for the heavyweight title back in the day? I think I remember that fight. that fight. It was not yet. Boss Rutten all out. Boss Rutten spent uh, like eighty percent of that fight on his back, but he never stopped working. Remember, he was elbowing him from the bottom, uh, threatening yeah, submissions. Non-stop, and they gave it to Boss because of that. He spent all you know, most of the fight on, on his back, but he won the fight. He won the title, and that reminded me of that fight yesterday. Because Guram, well, first of all, he pieced him apart uh, standing. You could feel the power difference was tremendous, and uh, uh, you know the knockdown and everything. I mean, he was better than him standing up. And then on the ground, he never stopped. He never stopped working. He was still going for Oma Platas. He was uh, pulling the yeah. butterfly guards. It was beautiful. Yeah, he was very active. It was a, it was a split decision, but pretty. It was pretty clear who the you know who 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 won the better split of the who won the better half of that split. You know. Well, you know, some people some people thought that um, Gamrat actually you know slightly had the edge, and they felt that because of the takedowns, he had the edge. And then at the end of the fight, Gudam even kind of said. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I won the fight. I think I'm not won the fight because of the takedowns. It's like, I don't necessarily, I don't know if that was a good idea. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, it was yeah. honest answer. So a, well, it was yeah, an honest nice. answer. So he got a lot of respect and a lot of fans when he yeah. said that. And guess what? Yeah, yeah, Guram, is, Guram is not a judge, man. You know? So everyone doesn't mean that he said, oh, I don't well, think I the won bad. the fight that, that he didn't win the fight because Here, in round one and in round two, he did win. Here's the best thing that you next really time he has a, next time he has a close fight, guess what the judges are gonna do? They're gonna give it to the other guy. You know what I mean? I haven't thought about that. that. That's bad. I haven't thought about that. It's, it's, it's potential, you're not always, you never know. Obviously, you know what they say, don't leave it in the hands of the judges. No, I'm just kidding. You know, obviously yeah, yeah, you yeah, said yeah, come easier on. said than done. <laughs> than done but no, really, it's what an amazing it's his first fight in the UFC. I mean, what an amazing First performance yeah, against an fight. undefeated guy, Jesus Christ. and he was just so sharp. And you saw his potential. Yeah, you, you see this guy is something special. You see this guy yeah. is really like just getting started. 
fight of the night, man. This is main event. Did he get the a bonus? Will be main event. Oh, yeah, get... fight of the night. Of course. Oh, fight shit. of the night. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> he, can, he can buy like 15 houses in San Miguel with that money. <laughs> <laughs> I like when he said Hamzat uh, is like his brother. And uh, he even said like, uh, talking about money, he said it. We'll send your yeah, family yeah, money yeah. and all that. Did you see that That's interview? That's really cool, man. Yeah, it's yeah. it's wild. Yeah. It's wild to hear for certain people that you know certain certain people the, that have never got gone through any diversity and hardships in their lives. It's kind of wild to listen to that kind of stuff. Like. But yeah, that's yeah, that's that's kind of, that kind of stuff is common for our people. We always help each other out because we always struggle and we we need each other. That's all we have. But yeah. It was good. It was it was good to set the tone like that. To good to explain what, what was how, really what kind beautiful. Of friendship, yeah. What was really beautiful yeah, like, for me was that you can see how happy Hamzat was, bro. You you can see yeah, and yeah. feel that, and that that is special, bro. That's brotherhood. That's <laughs> that's friendship. That's family. That's love. When you can see your brother is so happy for you, he's he's feeling that happiness. I don't think he was when he won. I don't think he when Hamzat won. I never saw he was as happy as when Guram won, bro. And that's yeah. the bond. That's the brothers, man. That's that's yeah. beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. That's the, yeah, it was the great, great thing man. about the martial arts, you know. In, well, in martial arts, you know, you, when you're on the mat with somebody, it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter. If you have different politics, different religion, uh, whatever the differences might be, in martial arts, it's a even, yeah. it's a level playing ground. It's an even, even playing ground, you know, for everybody. Yeah. And that's one of the great things about martial arts, and and that's uh, one of my favorite things about the martial arts, you know. Did you see Kuram said, I'm ready to fight Mahachev next yeah, week? Yeah, that's not going to happen, man. Whether well, it you know, happens or not, he put it out there. That means a lot. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And Kuram will fight. I don't think they will let him because you have to get tested after the fight, medical check and all that. And uh, to be honest, yeah, he went all three rounds, you know. And uh, I'm, yeah. I don't know how damaged he is because, uh, George, he's a kickboxer. And uh, kickboxers fight a lot. Like, so they're used to it. Sometimes they fight multiple times in one night. Sometimes yeah, they yeah. fight multiple times a week, you know. But uh, I want to ask George about this one. What do you think it was more of an impulse, uh, excitedness, or do you really think he, really, he just wants to fight next week? Because that was not an easy fight. Like, I think that um, I think he saw kind of like an opportunity, and I think that he feels good. You know, I think he – Probably at the time was, yeah, excited, and he probably feels very good, and he's a tough guy. I have no doubt that he could take this fight and, and do good in that next fight. I, I listened to that interview, and he, he didn't mean any kind of disrespect or no, anything. No, like of he, course. Said in the he was like, I just know that if something happens, or I think, I think he heard they need somebody, um, or <clears throat> he's like, he put himself out there. A lot of fighters have done the same thing. A lot of fighters, uh, you know, over the years, like, Donald Cerrone and, and some of these other guys, they've gotten themselves fights. Yeah. They've gotten themselves fights from just mentioning, hey, I'm available. Hey, I'll do it. Yeah, back to back. Yeah. And, then, and then when the fans support it, it's, it, it's a good thing. But probably right now, the UFC has a lot, a lot of guys. They have a lot of guys. I think they, you know, probably want to let Guram heal up from this fight and put him on, you know, something that's going to be good for him. Uh, you know, but who knows? We'll see. I think if Guram had a quality opponent, uh, the same quality opponent as Hamza did, he wouldn't. He probably would have knocked him out. Like, yeah, that's what <laughs> I thought when I was watching. It. Like, well, that is uh, different. But yeah, man, after that kind of display, like from both guys, I mean, they both have a bright future in the UFC. Probably, they're probably gonna both be top 15 to top 10 uh, they could fight the again year. maybe they will they fight could, again they they could fight again down the line yeah probably main event maybe like a fight night main event or something it it depends how they do but i don't think they will let guram fight islam just yet that that fight's not going it's not happening yet just yet now if but islam listen, was to say that i will take it then they would let it happen for sure if islam was to say yes no, i, will take I don't it, think but... so 
I don't think so. It doesn't make any sense. It yeah, wouldn't make any the, sense. I don't know how the rankings, the rankings and how all that stuff works. Maybe there's some other people that – it's also that your contract, you know. Some people have – some fights they need to do because of their contract or something like this. So yeah. a new contract, they have time. George, I heard that Gamrot, but he trains in uh, ATT. Sometimes. Yeah, so in Europe? In South Florida. No, we, no, in, in Florida. In Europe? Yeah. In, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. In South Florida, we have the headquarters, ATT headquarters, Coconut Creek. So yeah. he's there too. I mean, it seems like yeah. everybody's in ATT, man. I swear. Yeah, they have a great team. <laughs> They have a great team. Down you know, there. Ilya Topuria went there. You know, yeah, I, I did, I did hear. It. I did hear. I think his management team is down here. His managers. Yeah, yeah. His, same his manager as Jorge Masvidal, and this yes. is what this is what I want to say, yeah. Romy. Did you see the Masvidal tweet? Which one? Uh, which Mas one? Masvidal. Masvidal said robbery. And I was thinking, dude, you train, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you train in ATT. I don't pay attention to that shit. Yeah, no, they're, whatever, team, they're right? teammates, you know, they are. Yeah, so, and, uh, so... They have a great team over there. Yeah, they, they do a good job. You're listening to Fight Pod Georgia. Fight Pod. Weekly MMA podcast with the Cartuelias. With the Cartuelias. With the Cartuelias. With the Cartuelias. With when when mm. uh, when it was decision time for Guram's fight, bro. What be be honest? Did you did you think they were gonna give it to us? I honestly couldn't tell. I was on the fence. I did not know. I I, honestly, I, I was mean, I was sure we were gonna get screwed, man. I was fucking sure we were gonna get screwed. I yeah, see, we have the history, well, you know, right? Typically, <laughs> typically, when somebody's got an undefeated record. When somebody's undefeated, they, they lean towards him. Yeah, it's usually like it's very difficult for them to lose. They want to keep that. Yeah, they want it. So, but I'll say this: market on it. Gudam was very dominant the first two rounds. He was really pressing the action. So there's a lot to say, even in MMA, UFC, about pushing the action, ring control, and, and being yeah. aggressive. They actually they judge for that aggressiveness. Yeah, and pushing forward. That's actually yeah. something Some that they judge for. And if you look at the fight, he was kicking nonstop combinations. Boom, boom. He was nonstop. Yeah. Boom. He's got and some man, combos. kicks. He got a fusion style. You know, I think he probably grew yeah. up doing karate, taekwondo, but later on he got into Muay Thai. And so he's yeah. got a very fusion style. He, he, he's got a beautiful like Muay Thai style, but he mixes in the karate. He mixes in just like taekwondo. Just like Kiria. Giga, Giga, Kiria. Very dynamic. Yeah. Very dynamic. Most, of, most of the most of the Georgian uh, stand-up fighters have a uh, similar styles because they all start with Taekwondo and mm -hmm. then they switch to Dutch kickboxing and then the, the Muay Thai and they all develop kind of yes. same way. Yep. Yep. Obviously, Guram is very powerful. I've never seen a Georgian so kickboxer explosive. that powerful. So yeah. fucking powerful, man. It's yeah. Really, his his legs. I mean, <laughs> he's got like baseball best legs. It, this guy could chop the trees with those with them goddamn <laughs> kicks. I mean, it's working hard. It's unbelievable. You can see, as, as a trainer, and as a person, you know, as a person who's doing martial arts, literally his performance. That's that's how hard he's working. He's putting in so much effort. He's putting. He's working so hard. Like I think I've read the articles where him and comes out used to live at the gym. They actually used to yeah, sleep three, three years. Sleep so three years. Gym. Three. Can you imagine that? Three years. You don't have yeah. a room. You don't have a house. You're just sleeping at the gym and you're training all day, every day, maybe like four or five training sessions in a day. Your life, everything is around and just, so it's, it's a whole nother level. Wow. How much can they actually train together though? Because what do like, you mean? they're totally different weight, weight, right? So how much can you train with a guy who is way bigger than you? You're not gonna go full blown sparring with him, but you can still get better with working each other because they can both like Guram will will help him win the speed, uh, uh, uh cardio, speed cardio, yeah, speed. Like he, Guram has excellent conditioning. Obviously, he wasn't even tired yesterday, and it was a battle. And he's really fast. He's a lot faster than comes out, I would imagine. And so he probably helps him with that a lot, with the reflexes, and then comes out probably helps him with the uh, grappling. 
as far as the size goes, as far as getting used to uh, grappling bigger guys, stronger guys. So they can still work with each other, help each other, and ma- you know, make each other better. But when it comes to wrestling, Hamza needs to go with him, what, like 70%? No, you can go 100% in wrestling and in jiu-jitsu. You're not, you're not hitting anything. So in, in jiu-jitsu, every, every, it's, always, it's always 100% or, or wrestling. That's the beautiful thing about grappling. You can always go 100%. Uh, with, with striking, you can't do that. You're going to you know, leave yeah, yourself yeah, yeah, your, yeah. in the gym that way. But, but man, his, his kicks are – his shins are probably – well, right now in the UFC, he's probably has, he probably has one of the most – well-conditioned shins right now. Not maybe not the best. I'm not gonna claim that, but definitely one of the best well-conditioned shins right now. His shins are freaking unbelievable. Like when he yeah, I don't, hits I don't know, that bone. I don't know about his shins. I haven't studied. I don't know. I, I know he's got amazing kicks. I haven't studied. His you shin. could tell, bro. You could tell he didn't even care. He would. He he would. He just wanted to touch him with the chin. He didn't care where. He was like, as long as I kick him somewhere, I don't give a uh, shit. He was whipping his hip. Yeah. He was doing everything. Like he was. Yeah. He was, what, I, what I say. To my students, when I teach them, you know, Muay Thai and all that, I say, you want to turn your leg into a baseball bat. When you, yeah. when you, swing, when you swing your leg, you want to swing it like a baseball bat. Yeah. And that's pretty much what we saw with Guru. He was swinging his no. leg like a baseball bat. Like, Guru grabbing I'll, something, like, boom, boom. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> he's got such a good, such a good kick, such a good kicking game. It was unbelievable. I can't wait to see him did again you, now. Did what? you hear the, did you hear the announcer during the UFC fight, did you hear the announcer talk about yeah. all the Georgian fighters? I did, and then I fucking heard DC changing the subject again. I was like, "What? Well, shut the fuck up already. Let him talk. Listen, <laughs> DC like knows Hinche Gashuli, man. I've seen DC know, but... take a picture with, with uh, Hinche Gashuli, uh, yo. Best country, Georgia! Ah! That's all that's going on. 